Hello everyone and welcome back to our AI series. In this episode, we're taking a look at the hearing perception in our AI perception system. So previously we've done the sight system, now we're gonna do sound so they can hear us as we jump around the place and make lots of noise. So let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do sound. So at the moment, our character is gonna see us and chase after us. Uh, let's make it so that our footsteps make sounds as well as certain objects in the scene can make sounds too. So first thing you have to do is to set up the AI perception uh, component to receive sound uh, inputs. Let's go to the AI controller for our NPC here. We go to the AI perception component. And on the right hand side, I'm, I've got sight already in there. I'm going to minimize that and just add another one. And this one is going to be the hearing com uh, configuration. Now, this one doesn't have much in terms of settings. The only thing you should really mess about with are going to be the detection by affiliation. We'll turn that on for all of them. And also the hearing range. Uh, so you can customize this as you see fit for how far away they could possibly hear. Uh, however, this is a multiplier value. So you can get large numbers. You can also get smaller numbers based upon the volume of the sounds you play. So I'm going to leave it as 3000 for now. But you can tweak that if you so wish. So with that done, we now need to set up the AI perception target uh, perception updated event here to handle the hearing sense. So we made a function last time to deal with sight sense. We do something similar this time for uh, the hearing sense. Now hearing is interesting because they, you're never going to tell them exactly who caused the sound. You're going to tell them where the sound came from and for them to go over to that sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new function called handle sound sense okay and this will start the same way as we started the site sense where we get the class and we check what class it is so let's just copy this over into our sound function and the stimulus here we want to put over put into our functions inputs now obviously we want to change the equals here to be the hearing one so let's change that to hearing and we want to do AI sense hearing. Put that into a branch. Okay. So the way this works is that once he is walking around, we want to interrupt what he's doing and give him a new target location to hit. So at the moment, let's have to go back to my behavior tree. He is moving around, he's moving random location. I want to change this so that it doesn't do randomness if he's got given a target location. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna to go to our blackboard and we've got this target location key we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna feed this into my behavior tree. Let's go back over to our behavior tree and in here, in the roaming sequence, we're gonna add an investigation section. So with roaming, I'm gonna break down here and we'll do a sequence. And we'll put that on the left of our move random location. Now the reason why I'm putting it on the left is because I want it to check this first before it does anything else. Okay, so sequence here for this. Um, oh, sorry, we want to change this to not sequence, a sequence first, we want to change it to a selector first, sorry. Selector, and then into a sequence. And this move random location here would also go into a selector as well. Uh, the reason why we need a selector is because we want it to do one or the other. We don't want it to do both because uh, this is currently a sequence. So the selector will do left hand first. If it fails, it will then do move random location. So the decorator for this sequence here, I'm going to right click, add decorator, be a blackboard key. And the key we want to check is going to be that target location. So you just go to blackboard key, target location, and we're making sure it's set to something. Okay, so it is set. However, if it does change or get told to do something else or whatever we can set it to abort things as well so, and we mostly want to just do abort itself if we do clear it okay so if it changes so if it gets given a new target location so a new sound it's going to abort itself and then carry on going in that different direction so on this sequence here we're going to do move to and this is just a built-in move to here and we'll give it the blackboard key for target location and obviously here we can put in things like acceptable radius and things like that. Um, totally up to you what radius you want to put in. Uh, so one thing you may want to do though is turn on observe blackboard value. 
So I'm going to turn this on here. Now, as I said with target location, this will abort when it changes. Um, what I actually want to do is change it so it doesn't abort when it changes, but change it aborts when the result changes. This key query changes from is set to is not set. So up here, when on result change, um, it I'll say result change is that. That's what I mean. Value changes if we change different location. So if it, result change means it's being set or unset, value change means it's different numbers. So at the moment, I'm going to keep it as result change abort itself, and that means if the target location is then cleared for whatever reason, uh, it will stop doing its thing. But the move to here, I'm going to take it to observe the blackboard value. So as that value changes, it will update and change its location according to that. The tolerance you have here determines how much it has to change by before it determines that it needs to change. Okay, so that target location is there. Let's go back to our AI NPC. And in our stimulus uh, handle sound sense here, we are going to take the stimulus input and I'm going to break it open to get hold of that data from our sense. And most importantly, we want the stimulus location. So on true, we're going to set blackboard oh i have to get blackboard first get blackboard and then from there set blackboard value blackboard value as a vector and put that in there okay with that in now in true on key name we're going to drag out and do make and put in target location Okay. Right, so target location will investigate that noise and so forth. Now, if he reaches that location, I want it to clear that value. So let's go back to our NPC's behavior tree here. So we're going to go to this move to target location. If we successfully reach the target location, we want it to wait and then clear. Let's put in a wait here. We'll wait for uh, three seconds, maybe. You can put a random deviation if you like there too. Um, and we're going to make a, a, a really useful task here to clear blackboard value. So I'm going to go into create a new task, blueprint base. And we do BT task clear blackboard value. And I recommend making this for any AI you're making. It's a pretty strong way of uh, pretty, pretty often used. Uh, yeah, so we need to make a function for execute AI. And then uh, what the purpose of this is just to clear any old Blackboard value. So we need to put in the Blackboard key selector in here. So Blackboard key. And that would be a type for a Blackboard key selector. And then I'm going to drag this out. And we're going to do clear Blackboard value. A super simple one, not complicated at all, but it does clear it. Meaning that vector, um, you can't just set it to zero, 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 because obviously it will go to zero, zero, zero. Clearing just means it empties it out completely, it has no value whatsoever. Don't forget to put in a finish execute and tick the success box. Done. So let's put that onto our sequence here, and this will be our clear blackboard value. Oh, I forgot to make it editable. So if I double click on this, make the variable here editable by clicking a little eyeball, go compile and go back here, I can now choose which Blackboard key I want to clear. Now I'm going to choose the target location. In this sequence here, we're going to name the investigation sequence. Okay, so it only does it if it's been given the target location to go to, otherwise it'll do this move to random location. The NPC is only going to respond by going to a target location uh, site. We should be using it at all. We're just using the last known location. That's all good there. So now we've got to make it generate the reporting of the noise event. So what we're going to do is make it so that when we jump and land, that landing is going to cause a noise. Let's go to our characters animations here and go to landing. And in here, we're going to find the position of where we land on the floor. So here to start here. Notifier track over here, we're going to right click on this and go add notifier. 
do new notify and we do landed okay push done hit save and then we're going to go over to our abp many which is our animation blueprint now because a notify is made on the animation it's actually tied to the skeleton so because this shares this same skeleton it will also appear here too so if i right click and search for landed there's my event notifier for landed and we're going to do a couple of things in here first of all we just want to check make sure this is only the player generating this noise so we're going to get the owner try get pawn owner and also want to get the player character and see if these two are equal if they are it means that we're dealing with the players animations not the ai's because they're sharing the same blueprint then to a branch plug that in and then if it's true we're going to take the uh from true here and do report noise event and so whenever you want to generate a noise that can be heard by the ai you need to call one of these now it does require a few things the first thing it requires is the noise location so we're just going to get the try get porn owner and get the actor location for this and plug that in the loudness is the multiplier so this is how loud you want this thing to be so for example our range was uh 3000 in radius if we're putting one it could be heard within the full 3000 of that radius if i put in 0 0.5 then that radius will now be 1500 okay so it's a multiplier for that radius i'm gonna leave it as one because next thing we we'll use is the max range this is how far away it can be heard from so i'm going to put in uh, something like 300 okay actually let's do 500 now for this to actually work though you do need to make sure you give an instigator if you do not give an instigator it will not work so get your porn owner chuck it into instigator there and hit compile and to help test this out we're putting a print string in here um and we call it um landed and hit compile and save that Okay, and so the last thing you need to do is go to our AI controller and add in our handle hearing sense. So let's go handle sound, plug this in, and this requires the stimulus. Like so. Okay, so let's go into our game here. Um, so I've moved the AI here around the corner here and myself around the other corner. We'll try and not get seen by him yep and let's put on the debug so if i jump now I'm not going to hear me because i'm too far away so if i can get bit oh you see me if i can get near him yeah you heard that and he turned around immediately okay now if i turn off that range so you can see it working at full length i change that range back down to zero it will make the range maximum uh, match their radius so if i jump now there's a sound and he's, he should now walk over to that point there and it should wait and then you'll clear the value and continue roaming around same goes for here so sound there but again if i jump here it'll override it and go to this one instead Oh, now that one. Oh, damn, you see me. But there you go. And there you go. We now have our second system in there for hearing. So now they can hear us as we jump. But we can also tie to other things like when we shoot, we can do report noise events. We can also do report noise events for throwing things like stones about. All these sort of cool uses of that system that make the AI investigate an area that they're not normally investigating. So in the next episode, we're going to take a look at making patrol paths and look at how we can create a patrol path using a new AI behavior component that we're going to create from scratch. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can watch all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.